Hi, I'm Tracy Kimball. And I'm Tom Kimball. Welcome to MS Learn Online. For many women with MS, the questions surrounding pregnancy and motherhood are countless. This feature presentation is the first of a two-part series titled Kara's Story, MS and Pregnancy. It's a special look into one woman's journey with pregnancy and MS. We'll also hear from top neurologists who share their thoughts and concerns on this topic. Initially, when I approached the National Multiple Sclerosis Society of my idea to make a video about MS and pregnancy, I had questions that I thought needed to be answered by an MS specialist and that maybe other women had the same questions that I did. It is my hope that this video will reach a wide range of people, extending from OBGYN doctors to neurologists to anyone with MS and of course to women with MS who are struggling with a decision regarding pregnancy. <laughs> I hope these women will see my experience and say to themselves, oh gosh, I can do it too and of course, gain more knowledge or be inspired to get answers to their questions that were not answered on the video. It's hard to believe that it has been two years since we started shooting the video. And I think the most important thing that I learned was that us women with MS are more like other women than not. And that's really a great feeling. When uh, we decided that we wanted to get pregnant, uh, we did s as much research as we could. Uh, the first step being just, you know, reading the typical books that any other uh, soon-to-be parent would read and, and just trying to understand how uh, you know, a simple pregnancy will affect any partner's relationships and, you know, how they're going to move forward with that. So that was the first step. My cousin found a clipping in a pregnancy magazine about multiple sclerosis and pregnancy, which was a couple of pages long, and it was helpful. We're going to use this opportunity making the film as a learning tool as well. We'll learn along with everyone else, uh, really dig out that information, the questions that we have. My first symptom was probably in the summer of 1997, I uh, had a bad case of bad dizziness. The next year, I had a round blind spot in my left eye. The next year, in 99, I uh, was all of a sudden was having a hard time moving my right leg. And it was kind of a having a, to make an effort to walk and be careful not to trip. I uh, went for a long walk one day thinking I'd walk it out and got to my destination and realized that I wasn't gonna make it home. So I called my brother to have him come pick me up and he said, well, you should see a doctor. For many women with MS, the prospect of becoming pregnant and raising a family is often filled with doubts and concerns. In the bad old days, neurologists told women with MS not to have families and not to become pregnant. Unfortunately, this was not really based on any evidence. But as research has progressed over the past few decades, the results have continually shown that women with MS can have safe pregnancies, healthy children, and viable family lives. In general, um, MS does not affect a woman's ability to carry a child or bear a child, and thus the complication rate for a woman with MS would not be expected to be greater than uh, somebody without MS with a similar health status. But even with the reassurances of physicians and clinical studies, many women still find the thought of getting pregnant to be both intimidating and confusing. There are so many questions about drugs, fatigue, relapses, breastfeeding, and even whether or not the disease will be passed from mother to child, that trying to sort it all out requires a fair amount of research and patience. 
Fortunately for modern would-be moms and dads, there are many resources for information. Given a little time and effort, some answers can be found. Considering the unpredictability of the disease, the answers you'll find are often surprisingly simple. And so, um, the middle of October, I went off my medication because it's, uh, the doctors uh, suggested to go off the medication two months before you intend to try. So um, that was kind of a relief because I do take the um, Copaxin, which is a shot every day. So for the first time in a few years, I didn't have to do a shot every day. And I was pretty excited about that. And was really feeling very healthy and felt pretty confident about going off the medication uh, since I've done some lifestyle changes that have kept me healthy for a year or so. Um, I felt pretty comfortable about that. MS, uh, as far as we know, has no effect on fertility, no effect on um, miscarriages, no effect on congenital malformations or, or any other um, area concerned with conceiving and carrying a child. However, most doctors will recommend that women have their MS under control before trying to get pregnant. Keeping a routine that includes rest, exercise, and a healthy diet is especially important to pregnant women with MS. We certainly encourage uh, pregnant women with MS to go about their normal routine and their normal activities as well as they can tolerate. Uh, any, woman with it, uh, any woman who is pregnant is likely to incur increased fatigue and this may be a little more of a problem for a woman with MS, so it might be advisable for her to get a little extra rest. But other than this, she'd go, she should go about her normal schedule, uh, including work or recreation or exercise as she can tolerate it. Patients with MS should carry on their routine activities when they're pregnant as if they were not pregnant and of course that also includes for MS patients avoiding heat, so exercise outside in the summer, things like that. So uh, mid-December rolled around two months after going off the medication and I suggested that we casually start trying to my husband and we did and immediately got pregnant and uh, we got very lucky. And, uh, that was quite the blessing to get pregnant so soon. The next question is often, can I pass this along to my child? All things considered, while the hereditary risks are greater, the probability is fairly low, somewhere between 1 and 5 percent. If a parent has MS, the risk of a child uh, developing it is greater than the child of a parent who does not have MS. And this is approximately 5% um, for the daughter of a parent with MS and 1 to 3% for a son of a parent with MS. Oddly enough, women who have MS often discover that the effects of the disease are reduced during their pregnancy. I disagree with what was done decades ago where women with, with MS were told not to have children. And the reason I disagree with that is because what will happen when they have a child is during pregnancy they'll be protected somewhat, well actually significantly, from relapses in the last half of the pregnancy. We now have decades of data that tell us that women with MS certainly can um, become pregnant and bear children and that this does not affect their long-term disability and we have recent data that tells us that pregnancy is actually very protective. So in general I try to encourage my patients who want to start families to go ahead and do that. One often wonders, what does this protection during pregnancy mean? Does it mean that my symptoms are going to get better, or, or does it mean I'm not going to have a relapse? So to be very specific, what the protection during pregnancy means is that during the last trimester, and really approximately the last half of pregnancy, there will be a decreased probability of having a relapse. And of course, that is a new symptom that comes on over a day or two and lasts for weeks. So there's a decreased probability of having a relapse. It does not mean that pre-existing symptoms will necessarily get better or worse. It just means you're less likely to have a relapse. Having a family has always been a dream of mine and my husband's. We both were raised in big families and really cherish what a family brings. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but February 3rd of 2000 was the day I was diagnosed with MS. I'm hoping to tell my sister today, February 3rd, because it's a day that I kind of want to replace. Today I'm going to replace that bad memory with the great one and tell you that I'm pregnant. Instead of being my <laughs> diagnosis day, it's going to be my new good news day, so I'm really excited to do that.
Well, I was nervous that I'm excited to follow in my mom's footsteps and my sister's footsteps. The pictures are incredible. This is only after eight weeks, and um, they were able to measure the baby and give an estimated delivery date. Uh, watching them become great mothers and being great mothers, it's a challenge I want to take on. I think it's going to be wonderful. In this picture, you can see a little tiny hand up by the face. There was a little hand waving around the whole time. Another question on the minds of women with MS is the issue of breastfeeding. Again, MS creates more complications. One of the difficult decisions that a woman with MS who is pregnant may have to make is whether to breastfeed or whether to uh, resume her disease-modifying therapy uh, soon after delivery. All doctors would say not to take disease-modifying drugs and breastfeed, at least in the United States. I don't know and I don't believe the drug companies know whether the disease-modifying agents go through the breast milk. We need to know that answer. And so as long as you don't know the answer and it's possible that they go through, we generally are very cautious and tell women to go off of the disease-modifying agents or stay off of them while they're breastfeeding. We can never predict if and when someone is going to have a relapse, but it is reasonable to assume that women who have had a lot of disease activity, that is a lot of relapses before they were pregnant, will probably be somewhat more prone to have relapses after they deliver. In these women it's probably preferable for them to resume their disease modifying medication sooner rather than later. So there's a really difficult issue and that is balancing the benefits of breastfeeding, which be good for the baby versus their own health, which they're taking a risk if they're not, not on their disease-modifying agents and they're breastfeeding. So this comes up a lot, and I certainly don't give them the answer because there is no answer. It's very individual. Breastfeeding is uh, up in the air depending on when you want to start your medication back again. If you want to start it immediately, then, uh, you know, they say plan on not breastfeeding much, and that was a little disheartening. One might consider, though, before they, before they feel guilty about not breastfeeding for months and going back on their disease-modifying agents, before they feel guilty about not doing the bonding thing and looking at their own health first because they want to go back on disease-modifying agents, they might, not, they might think of themselves not being quite so selfish because I think the baby would really like also to have a mother who is in good shape. Even with the advantage of reduced symptoms of MS during pregnancy, women with MS will still need the support of everyone in their lives to reduce possible complications and to create a positive outcome. So for women with MS, the need to plan and to create a network of support is critical for a successful pregnancy. Women with MS may often want to have a team of healthcare professionals that work with them during the pregnancy. Um, this is an excellent idea. It should certainly include their obstetrician or their midwife, their neurologist, there may be a nurse that works with them. A physical or an occupational therapist may want to get involved during the later stages of the pregnancies if some activities of daily living become more difficult. Additionally, these rehabilitation specialists will be invaluable in helping the woman to uh, carry out her activities of daily living and care for the baby after the delivery. First of all, I think it's very important to have a support team and not just a hardcore medical support team, meaning your OBGYN and your neurologist, but I think you need other support mostly in the sense of help <laughs> after the baby's delivered because this will be the most critical time and this will be the most difficult time because they may, may be very fatigued and they may have a relapse and so I think just social support and physical help with taking care of the child will be extremely important so I would hire a nanny or someone to come into the home or maybe a mother or a sister or an aunt whatever a relative to come and help and and have a commitment to be there and help possibly every day for for six to nine months just to get the woman through that period. The support I get from my mom is just unmeasurable. Uh, right next to Eddie, her and my dad are my uh, support system, my backbone. She's the one that really has to take the step and have the courage and I'm there to support her in that in every step of the way. He's a good supporter. <laughs> He's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> funny. What a heartfelt journey we're on with Kara and her husband. Indeed. Look for the second part of this webcast as we watch Kara move through her pregnancy and into motherhood.
Welcome to MS Learn Online. I'm Tom Kimball. And I'm Tracy Kimball. This is the second of a very special feature presentation, Kara's Story, MS and Pregnancy. Now we'll pick up Kara's story as she progresses through her pregnancy and into motherhood. Today is Tuesday, March 30th. I'm uh, starting my 18th week and enjoying the second trimester much more than the first trimester. Uh, feeling a lot more perky and lively, but uh, along with that, definitely a little bigger and growing out of my clothes. It's been on our minds a lot lately about what we want to do once the baby is born um, to keep my health healthy and what to do uh, to keep me active at the same time. I uh, enjoy working and enjoy being active, but at the same time, the high mental stress wasn't helping me uh, with my MS and that I felt kind of hurt it a little bit. So I'd like to maintain a work-life balance. Today at the 20-week appointment, uh, really excited to see um, how the baby looks. Definitely have gained some weight, so the doctor will be happy about that. And uh, just, I'm really excited uh, for Eddie since he's been um, obviously not as involved as I have in the pregnancy in the way of feeling it and have an inkling of what's going on. I'm going to go right in here. My name will be Janelle and I'm going to be doing your ultrasound. Okay, great. This has all been with sound waves. There's no radiation. Hi. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Big question of the day. Are you guys interested in knowing the baby sex if I can tell? No, we do not want to know. We are at 26 weeks, so we're officially into the third trimester, I believe. Uh, three more months, um, almost till due date. I've been um, a little worried and apprehensive about the coordination between um, my MS doctor and my OBGYN. Um, I definitely want them to be coordinating with one another so that um, they're both on the same page with the pregnancy. and. And because the OBGYN honestly said, you know, he's not all the way familiar with MS and pregnancy because he just hasn't had it um, in his office very much. I mean, women with MS uh, may see an increase in some of their symptoms during pregnancy. These may include fatigue, urinary frequency and urgency, and as she becomes uh, heavier and uh, bigger with the child during pregnancy, more difficulty in walking. You have MS, you have some disability, and now you're stressed. You're stressed with having a center of gravity that's off. You're stressed with having a, a bladder. You know, women have to go to the, they have to urinate frequently when they're, when they're pregnant and they have pressure on the bladder. If they already have uh, uh, urgency, then, you know, you can imagine that putting the two together, it'll be a little bit worse. It won't be dramatic, but again, you just have a little bit of disability and now you're adding a stressor on that. So it, it'll temporarily maybe be a little bit more difficult. Today's a doctor's visit with my um, neurologist. Hi, I have an appointment with Dr. Bowling at 910. Okay. He was happy about the pregnancies. I uh, thought everything looked really great. and um, I performed my test well. I walked a straight line and <laughs> so, um, so really good on that side. Uh, we kind of closed the discussion talking about um, breastfeeding uh, after um, I have the baby and due to the um, lack of severity in my case, uh, he feels that breastfeeding at least for five to six months will be safe, which was really a relief for me. I really would like to, as long as I can, that's important to me. Tonight was our last night for infant care class. It was a two-week class, and tonight we learned how to bathe and diaper the baby and put clothes on the baby. And I think we, we passed. We did a pretty good job. The baby's not crying, so <laughs> we're getting excited. We're uh, 
only have two weeks and one day left until due date. September 9th is coming up soon. Uh, went through a long weekend of kind of sitting around and waiting and wondering <laughs> what was going on. And, uh, had lots of contractions all weekend long and going in. Ready to have a baby. Most women with MS uh, will have um, a labor and delivery conducted in the same manner as for a woman who doesn't have multiple sclerosis. S a small percentage of women who may not be able to feel contractions might need extra assistance with the, the delivery. Women always ask what kind of anesthetic is safe for them to uh, have during labor and deliver delivery. In general, um, women with MS can tolerate uh, general anesthesia and or epidural anesthesia the same way a woman without MS would tolerate it given that they're otherwise medically healthy. During the first year following delivery, MS moms, like most other new mothers, are faced with a variety of challenges. Of course, when you add the inherent problems of multiple sclerosis, every challenge and every decision is often magnified. For new moms with MS, the normal fatigue that's common with the disease is amplified by the arrival of a new baby. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the wariness of motherhood ends and the MS begins. This is the time when teamwork is essential. With help, the new mom should be able to focus on resting, caring for her new baby, and taking care of herself. Household chores and even work will probably need to take a back seat to the matters of motherhood and MS. I would say you need to think about this because you got to have help in those three months after you have a baby and sometimes some people up to six to nine months, you could have a relapse and you need to be ready for that. You need to have help and if they're ready for that and they know what they're, they're up against, then I, I say great. With the pregnancy finished, so goes the protection it brings from the symptoms of MS and the potential return of relapses or exacerbations. Research has shown that almost 40% of women with MS suffer a relapse during the first nine months following delivery. 30% of those occur within the first six months. Currently there is no treatment that is specifically designed to prevent the postpartum relapse. What is generally done is women try to resume their disease-modifying drugs as soon as possible. And as soon as possible is important because most of the disease-modifying drugs take months to work. I think we've gotten the idea across that the, the pregnancy itself is actually very protective um, and that there is a spike in the relapse rate in the first several months postpartum, but studies indicate that even if somebody does have a relapse, statistically it tends not to increase long-term disability. The risk of postpartum depression is also very real. It's been estimated that 70% of mothers without MS have some depression following the births of their babies. Many of these feelings are the typical result of changes in hormones after childbirth. When added to the natural difficulties of MS, these percentages could be higher. Untreated depression can create serious problems. One of the worst parts of having multiple sclerosis is living with its unpredictability. And unfortunately, uh, as a physician, very often I'm not able to tell somebody what their disease course is going to be or if they're going to have relapses or if they're going to sustain long-term disability. Um, but um, being a parent myself, what I certainly can tell them is that any parenting is fraught with some uncertainty and some unpredictability. There's the proud papa. He was a fantastic coach and supporter, and uh, he did great. We had a big day, uh, two hours of pushing, and he was on the ball with every contraction and would say, 
Do you want to push in the head? I swear no. Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> then I stopped asking the question. There you go. It's a boy. <laughs> that was surprising enough. Born um, on September 7th, weighing 7 pounds, 14 ounces, 20 inches long. Um, what else is there? Five fingers on each hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got Five all of <laughs> We're all put together pretty well. It looks really good. So maybe Macy can sing happy birthday. <laughs> how big are you? Show them how big you are. I didn't have all the answers that I was looking for before I got pregnant. It kind of fell in uh, place along the way, but the truth is the most difficult questions I had came from inside of me. Like I said, a lot of the most difficult things I found inside my heart, not from a doctor or from a research and um, statistics. Before having this one uh, child, there was always definite plans of having at least two children, if not more. And to be honest, it took more out of my health than I thought it would. Um, now the importance of being there for just my one child, more or less two or three, um, has become a reality in my life. And if I'm not strong enough to have more, um, then no, I wouldn't have any more because I want to be strong for the ones that I do have. You know, I really appreciate Karen and her husband being so open with their story. I agree. How wonderful of them to share their experiences with all of us. Thank you also to the doctors for sharing some of the important facts one should know when considering the decision to become a parent. And of course, thank you for joining us on MS Learn Online.